On the phone, we have Pro Football Hall of Famer Yale Lari. How did you end up going to Texas A&M to college? Well, first of all, they scattered me at uh, high school, and I had several offers from uh, schools, uh, Naval Academy and Notre Dame and University of Texas, a and several of them. I chose Texas a and I would have thought growing up in Fort Worth that uh, TCU would have come after you. or Well, they did, too. I forgot about TCU. You know, you, you had Sammy Baugh, who oh, yeah. I imagine you, you you remember what from when you were a kid. And then uh, in Dallas, you had SMU with Doak Walker. I would yeah, think either one, of those, either one of those schools would have loved to add you. Uh, TCU, of course, did, and uh, SMU. I don't remember if they did or not. I don't think they did. But uh, I played. I played uh, in Detroit with Doug Walker. He's one of my favorites and one of very good friends. And uh, I knew Sammy Ball, of course, but played against him too one year before he retired in uh, in Washington. I was told that Sammy Ball was one of the best players in NFL history because. Unlike Jim Brown, who just played an offense, Sammy Baugh could do it all, play offense, defense. Well, I, I played against Jim Brown, of course, several years, and he, uh, he made a classic statement about me. We played him in championship games and beat him every time. And uh, he said, well, I, I never, never didn't know if Yale was going to block me or tackle me. And, I, and uh, he said, he gave him a nice compliment. He was very friendly, and he's, we've remained friends for a long time. What was your time at Texas A&M like? Because they had some t- tough times there when you were there. Well, it was just, this is just a military school, so to speak. It was an all-boys school, all-male school when I went there. And... Uh, There a lot of returnees from the World War II. I mean, I went I went down there in 1948 and uh, graduated. And uh, I'm glad I did. I went in the in the, I got my commission down there and went during the Korean War. I served for, for two years and. Took two years out of my professional career, but I came back alive, and uh, that's the most important thing, I guess. When you got drafted by the Detroit Lions, did you think that you could make a career out of playing in the NFL, or was it just you thought play there a couple of years and then basically start working? No, at the time I didn't. Uh, professional football wasn't wasn't all that. Offer down here. They got to see the Thanksgiving game against Green Bay in Detroit, but it, uh, I just uh, I thought it was a challenge, man. I was honored that they, that they drafted me as high as they did. I was their first draft choice to keep. And, uh, right. Detroit didn't have a first round or a second round. And uh, was there a lot of expectation placed upon you as you know, being the first player taken by the Lions? I have no idea. I'm sure it was because that's quite an honor to be their first pick. And I uh, was uh, very flattered with that, with the choice that they made. And uh, they made it for a pretty good reason, I guess, because I had a fabulous career up there. I mean, your defense, you had multiple Hall of Famers on there. There was you, Joe Schmidt, you know what, Night Train Lane, and Alex Karras, who should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I have no idea. He's, he's a fine football player. He was. But uh, it's not my, not, my, not my vote to get him in there, so... I don't, uh, 
No comment on that. And you had a great quarterback in uh, Bobby Lane. The best. He's, he's, his famous saying was, he never lost a game. He just ran out of time. And I, I believe that he, he was, uh, by all means, the greatest. Your coach was Buddy Parker. What what was he like? Mm, he's very, very uh, to himself. And when he said something to you, well, you better pay attention because he he didn't he didn't speak too much to individuals. He's very very uh, worried about the team and the individuals and everything, but he was a fabulous coach and obviously he was he won won a lot of games and championships. What made Bobby Lane so good? His competitiveness his competitor he was like in he he pitched baseball at the University of Texas, never lost a game. And uh, I don't think he. I don't think he lost any football games, even not very many. If he did, he's just a great competitor. No. Good talent, naturally, he had talent. <laughs> how How did you get started punting? Pardon? How did you get started as a punter? No, a long time ago, during the, during the war. World War Two. We were went to a military game. I was, I was in junior high school, I guess, and uh, the army playing another another branch in the high school football stadium. And somehow the football they kicked that extra point. They went over the fence, and I got I got the ball, and we started punting it in the street when I was I don't know I was about. 12 years old, something like that, 12 or 13. And it just, uh, just came natural. That's when I started, and it just, it just came natural. With you and Jack Christensen and Jim David in the backfield, I don't think there was many uh, backfields as good as your guys on defense. What made you guys so good? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> well, we played together quite a while, and we kind of knew what, instinctively, we kind of knew what one was going to cover and if they, if they could or not. And I don't know, just uh, worked together and, and uh, played together. Now, at the time, Detroit was on top of the football world, you know, the winning championship after championship. What was that like when you win the NFL championship uh, right off the bat in your pro career? Well, it was wonderful. It was a real thrill that uh, you no know, other teams, have, you know, of all the teams, uh, you're the best team up there, and that's saying quite a bit. It's quite an honor, especially when you didn't have had all those teams and had 33 ball players on the team. And, and uh, you beat every other team, and it's quite a thrill. So we won the world championship three times, and, and uh, 52, 53, and 57. In the 52 game, you beat the Browns with uh, Paul Brown as their coach and Otto Graham. How hard was it to play defense against Otto? They're just about as hard as it is on any, any top quarterback. He was he's a good quarterback. Excellent, but his record proves it. So. In 57, you're in training camp, and Buddy Parker quits as the coach. George Wilson takes over. What, what was the player's reaction? Well, it's hard to believe, but we couldn't believe it whenever. We went to the meet the line back with downtown Detroit, and uh, and Buddy got up and said that he 
quit. So that was a, a, a real shocker to us. And what can you do? What was George, Wilson, George Wilson was a good coach. Who was your favorite coach that you played for? The what? Who was your favorite coach to play for? All of them were my favorite. I would like to love them all, and they're all fair to me and gave me a chance to do what I did. I had uh, Buddy Parker and George Wilson. That was the only two I had. Now, in 1957, you're playing San Francisco for the Western Conference Championship. Y.A. Tittle throws three touchdown passes in the first half. You guys are trailing 24-7 to at halftime. That's right. But you rallied to win 31-27. What, yeah. what changed first half to the second half? I don't know. Uh, I guess the, the cream rose, I guess, uh, it goes to the top. I don't know. The Judd, uh, Toby Road had a fabulous day, and Tom Tracy had a fabulous day. And uh, it's part of the game. How would you describe Joe Schmidt as a football player? Uh, naturally, he's a great ball player and just a, a tremendous leader and just uh just it's uh could get everybody together and raise the spirit and and uh, that's just a good leader. The inspiration. Yeah. What what was Doak Walker like as a teammate? Who? Doak Walker? Oh just a wonderful, wonderful man. The, always my idol. He could do everything. Run, pass, kick, field goals, extra points. I always kind of wanted to be like him. And uh, I could do a few things like him, but not many. What was your favorite moment in the NFL? I don't know, just... I guess winning the world championships, I guess that's a, that's the uh, that's what you're up there for. That's what we're up. And I just wanted to make my family proud of him and a lovely wife and my, my two children, boy and a girl. And uh, yes, of course, I'm pleased with the uh, my performance and was very thrilled to get what honors I did get. Now, 1964 was your last season. You had six interceptions. Your punting average was 46.3 yards per kick. Could you have played longer, do you think? Well, I was offered to several opportunity just to fly over there on the weekends and punt, but I I declined that. What I find amazing... I, 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 there's no question. There's no question I could have played a lot more. Lot, I could have played defensive back, I thought, for maybe a couple more years. But uh, punter, I could have punted for no telling how long. What I find amazing is you played safety, punter, and you returned uh, kicks and punts. That's okay. unheard of for a punter or a uh, kicker. I'm sure it is. How fast were you? Hell, I, 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 was, I was pretty fast. I don't know. I never found I was, I was uh, um, in high school. I was staying flat. And I don't know. They never time me, you know. And professional, so I was fast enough to turn a few kickoffs, a few punts for it. I had some good moves and fast enough. Who Doug was Walker, Doug Walker wasn't real fast either, but he had 
he had the ability to find that little gap. I did too on several of them. Were those stories about Bobby Lane drinking true, or were they magnified? I don't have any question about they were magnified, which uh, I don't have any comments on that. He was a real good friend of mine, and, and a lot of a lot of writers have to uh, to write about these, these popular individuals, and they they pick him because he was very uh, outspoken and. He didn't hide his activities any, so and he was a great ball player. He was, he was very uh, obviously he was no knows wherever he went. When the Lions traded for Dick Knight Crane Lane, how much did that help the defensive secondary? Well, that's still there in the place that uh, Jim David, when Jim David retired, we needed somebody over there, and, and he was available, and he was a, a great defensive back. It's hard out there, hard out there. And you get uh, all by yourself, and when you're in the cornerback, and they spread in out there, a receiver out there, one one one. He was a good one. When you went in the Hall of Fame, did you expect it? And what were your feelings? Hmm. I didn't expect it. I wouldn't, didn't plan on it. I just uh, very, very honored, of course. And I uh, certainly feel like I deserve it when you look back. At, but I never did have any idea that I, I would. I didn't go, up, didn't go up there to do that. I went up there just to, to make make some money. I just married and uh, you just need to have a job. I could have had a job when I graduated from from the A&M, but I didn't didn't want to take stay in the Army. And uh, I could have been a coach in high school or maybe college. I don't know. But, uh, no, I was thrilled to death to make the team. Who, who was the toughest quarterback that you had to go up against? Hmm. I guess probably Johnny United is one of them. One of the toughest ones. And Brockman was really tough. And, uh, wasn't any of them easy. Who was your favorite player growing up? <laughs> oh, God. I guess uh, uh Uh, I didn't really have a favorite player. My favorite player was, was my dad. He played football in, in the same high school, in our South High School that I, did, that I played in. I played after after him, of course. But uh, I don't know. I don't have. A, didn't have a favorite player or a, high school, or a college player when I was, I was too busy playing. High school ball, and I played every sport there was in high school. You were now, rumor, rumor has it you were a pretty good baseball player too. Yeah, I made all Play conference for, I, baseball. Made all conference in baseball. Right in, we went to the World Series. I had a home run in the World Series and beat Ohio State three to two. Uh, Marty Carroll was coach uh, coached me at A and M. Then he went to Ohio State and it gave, gave me a thrill to hit a home run and beat him up there in, in uh, Omaha. Jim, do you ever think you should have played pro baseball instead of uh, the NFL? 
No, not really. Had a chance to have, had a chance to, of course. When Paul Hornick said you were the best punter he ever saw, what did you, Paul Hornick said you were the best punter he ever saw. I can't hear, who said that? Paul Hornick. Oh, Harmon, oh, Paul Harmon. Oh, well, that's flattering. I appreciate it very much. We didn't have a, the domes like we have now and all that stuff. We had to play with ice, sleet, snow, and rain, and and uh, the elements were weren't favorable like most of them are now. And I feel like I and I did the best I could do at the, at the moment. I'm proud of what I you. did. You did pretty well. I you know. What, were, what was playing on Thanksgiving like in Detroit? Well, it's a big city. I didn't mean, actually I was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, and it was it's not a not a real small city, but it's pretty good size. But Detroit was just a kind of overwhelming. Did you ever think there would be? Let's see, 50, what, six years since Detroit won a title. Did you ever think it would take go that many years between titles? Hmm. I didn't, I didn't think about it. I went out there to win, play the best I could, let the chips fall where they may. I, just, I was trying to make the, the football team because back in those days, you didn't have to make much money, and I, I just got married, and... Uh, Needed to, needed to make the team. No guarantees. 